Hello, Professor Carolyn. What are we going to talk about today? Hi, Ivan. Today we are going to talk about slum mapping. So slums uh, tend to be informal areas that you see a lot in lower middle income countries. And uh, according to the UN definition, slums are areas that are characterized by uh, people living in vulnerable living conditions. So they are areas that are overpopulated, areas of the city that have lack of access to water, to decent sanitation, where there's a very high building density. And often these areas are informal, which means that, um, that there's no legal tenure to be living there. And so what you often see is that when cities are growing because people are coming in very rapidly, there's not enough housing. And so especially the poorer populations will start building where they are able to. And this is a very big problem because it's happening at a very large scale in lower middle income countries. And essentially the people living there live in very poor conditions. And so there's a lot of effort in the, um, in the development world to try to improve the living conditions in these areas. Okay, and how does MAP uh, yeah. mapping these places will help? So the thing is that because they are often informal and people are, are staying where they are able, we don't actually know where the buildings are. So we don't know where the buildings are, where the services are, where the roads are, the, the buildings just appear. So then it's really difficult to plan, to take into account. Imagine that you are responsible um, in a city and you have to bring services to different areas. If you have no idea how many people there are, how are you going to even plan to bring water, electricity or other uh, waste to disposal services into these areas? So the idea of mapping is that mapping is kind of the basic level that we need in order to do a better urban planning, to know how many people there are, what is needed in an area. Okay, so I'm very curious about the technical aspect of it. Uh, yeah. Why do we use drones? Because I think that's your your uh, yeah. tool of choice. But why not use it using use satellites, for instance? Yeah. So usually when you see satellites, satellites are characterized that they cover a larger area, right? So if you are doing an analysis of the entire city. Uh, it's, it's easier to use a satellite image and people use satellite images for slum mapping, but more to distinguish which areas are slums and which areas are not. And that's a very, um, a lot of work is being done here at ITC on that aspect as well. But now imagine, and then that was the context of my work, that we have said, okay, this area is a slum and we want to improve it. Now, slums often, the, the buildings that are there tend to be smaller, the very narrow pathways. You don't really have roads between the buildings, but you have very narrow pathways and you have a very complex environment. So even on satellites, it can be difficult to identify individual buildings. And you can also think that the government might not have up-to-date data. Mm -hmm. So the big benefit of using a drone in this aspect is that you can get a lot more detailed information and it's really up to date. So let's say that you have an application that you already know, this is a sum I want to work on. I want to do an upgrading project on it. Then I need more detailed information. I need a very detailed design. And in this case, uh, Joan can really help. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, so what have you done with the, with the information that you yeah. captured, for instance? So we worked together with the city of Kigali starting in 2015. Where is that? It's in Rwanda, in Rwanda, Africa. Okay. Yeah, it's the capital. And so there they were actually, the World Bank and the city of Kigali were going to do an upgrading project. And then I came um, from ITC with a drone and we were working together to see what it could do. And then we saw that drones were useful for a number of aspects. First of all, when the, the consultants were planning the upgrading project, they didn't know even where to go, how to move from one place to another. They didn't know, okay, if we want to plan how to collect solid waste, where is the solid waste going now? So even just by having the image, uh, we spoke with the consultants and with the city and they said it was much easier to plan where to start the upgrading process. Mm -hmm. Another advantage is that it was really participatory. So when you do an upgrading project in a slum, because there's no space, you almost always need to move households in order to make space for the roads and for the new infrastructure. And of course, this is a very delicate process because you're taking someone's house away and putting them somewhere else. And um, what really helped is because you had the, the drone imagery with such detail, is it helped also with the dialogue to really mm -hmm. explain to people, okay, look, with this planning, this is why we are looking at these houses and not those. And then on top of that, what part of my own research was, is about automating the workflows. So we found that the UAV image, just by showing the image we got from it to different mm -hmm. people, it has a lot of benefits. But imagine if you are able to automatically get the information. What if you are able to automatically count the houses or 
uh, find where the vegetation is and, and this aspect. And so a lot of my research work is also focused on that, on how to automatically get maps from mm -hmm. UAV data. And for that you're using machine learning? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, machine learning, deep learning, um, all these different artificial intelligence methods that are now gaining such popularity to automate this process. Okay. And uh, in the end, how, how do you see this as what is the major benefit that comes out of this to, to the people actually living in the, in the slums? Yeah. It, it's on different levels because also different users um, using the method. So the, the artificial intelligence methods are one thing to kind of speed up the process. If you look at the city level, I mean, essentially, it's a, it's a better planning and a more efficient planning. But one thing that I thought was really cool for my own research is that as it was a participatory upgrading project, they actually printed the images that we had collected and put them on the walls of the ward offices. So within the, the way that it was organized um, in Kigali is that there are like different administrative units in the neighborhoods and there's like a public building there. Mm -hmm. And so in this building, they had also printed the maps and they put them there. And two years later, we went back or I went back and I said, hey, the maps are still there. What are you using them for? And it was really nice because they said that even people were coming in and using the maps for things that they did not expect when we first left them there. So, for example, um, someone was telling that um, somebody had walked in because they were looking to buy a house. And they said, OK, you know, I want to buy a house. I want to know, is there already a road close by or not? Because, of course, I don't want to need to be moved later. Mm -hmm. So they came in and they were looking and like, OK, this is where I'm going. And for me, this was really cool because when we first went to collect the data, I was super excited and I was going and asking everyone, what can you use it for? You know, people were looking at it and like, yeah, well, I can tell my grandchildren what the city used to look like yeah. later. And I was a bit frustrated because, you know, coming from GIS, I was like, okay, it has many uses. But it turns out that with time, they were kind of finding their own use for the data. And I thought so that was a solution really cool. looking for a problem and it actually, actually found the problem. Exactly, many, exactly. Yeah. And that, I thought that was really nice also to think that as we do research and as we are working with different projects, that you can see that many different people can use this data for different reasons. And I think that was really nice to see in my project as well. Do you want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our geo heroes posts a new video.